Hello, Riles. For lesson 8.4, we found the intersection of two planes. Um, I found an example in our homework where something kind of interesting happens, and I want to advertise it. But if you haven't had a chance to do page 301, number 6E yet, you might want to try it yourself or um, try solving in a different way than I do, just to see um, if you come to the same conclusion. So we have two planes, and from our lesson, we know possible orientations. They might be parallel, meaning they wouldn't intersect. They might be coplanar, or coincident, I suppose, meaning that there's a plane of intersections. Uh, and the only other possibility is having a line of intersection. So we should not expect only one solution. There's no way that planes can have a point of intersection. That's really important to keep in mind in this case. Okay. Um, an analysis of the normals doesn't take too long, but I'm going to jump right into trying to solve the system here because I think I can see a contradiction, a truism, or well, so both of these are truisms. We might want to keep an eye on the difference in between them. Anyways, let's see what happens. I'm going to jump right in and try to solve this system. Uh, let's see. I mean, I don't think it would be easiest to do so, but I think just for alphabetic sake, I'm going to eliminate Zs. You could say, uh, wouldn't it be easier to eliminate x's? Well, I would still have to multiply both equations. To eliminate y's, I would have to multiply both equations. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to eliminate z's. I'm going to tell my reader I am eliminating z's and tell myself to keep track of my goal. And to eliminate z's, I'd like the coefficients on my z's to be either the same or opposite. Uh, let's go for the same since they're already the same signs. To do that, here, let's call this equation 1 and this equation 2. Let's tell our reader that we're going to do equation 1 times, what's our least common multiple here, uh, 18. So 1 times 3, and that'll give me 9x plus 6y minus 18z equals 15. I'll call that statement 3 or equation 3. That's still plain 1. It's just, uh, some people call this a Cartesian form. The constant doesn't really matter what side the constant is on. Anyways, um, to get my z coefficient from plane 2 to be 18 or negative 18, let's multiply by 2. So equation 2 multiplied by 2 gives me 4x plus 6y minus 18z equals negative 20. And we'll call that statement 4. Now, I wonder if you can see the concern or what's sort of different here from lesson examples. Remember, my goal was to eliminate z, not to eliminate y. But when I eliminate z by doing, um, I don't know, how about equation 3 minus equation 4? That'll give me 9x minus 4x. That'll be 5x. And 6y minus 6y. Well, that's plus 0y. Uh, some people will write it in because they didn't want it to eliminate. That wasn't their goal, but it's going to disappear in a second anyways. Uh, and negative um, 18z minus negative 18z, that's zero zs. I don't write that in because that was my goal. Um, 15 minus negative 20 is uh, 35. So this seems strange because um, I was expecting either a contradiction or a truism or a line of intersection where there's an infinite number of um, solutions. And what I'm getting is an equation that has only one solution. And this might cause me some concerns and say, wait a minute, how could x just always be 7? So this is where I might want to go back and, and verify things and say, take a look at this. Normal 1 is 3, 2, negative 6. Normal 2 is 2, 3, negative 9. Normal 1 is definitely not a scalar multiple of normal 2. We can observe this. You don't, unless you're asked to, you don't have to prove this. And that means that I'm, let's say, 95.3% sure that there should be a line of intersection. I wonder then if it's possible that maybe on this line of intersection, the x value just doesn't change. The x value stays the same. Knowing what we're supposed to do next then, this helps a lot. Knowing that we're expecting a line of intersection. So to have a line of intersection, I'm expecting an infinite number of points, I suppose. But I'm also expecting a parameter. And while in most of our examples in class, at this stage we introduced a parameter into whatever equation was left here that had x's and y's, I still need to introduce a parameter. I, I just might hold off on that. Maybe I will take this statement, and I'll call this statement statement 5, and say I'm going to substitute statement 5 
into, how about equation one? Okay, equation one has to be true for the intersection to exist, but equation five also has to be true. It, it comes from the truth dependent on the truth of three and four, which came from the truth of one and two. Substituting statement five into one kind of feels like, oh, I'm on track to find the point of intersection, but that's silly. There's, there can't be a point of intersection. Anyways, let's just, I guess, pretend we're silly for a little bit. Uh, and that'll give me that statement right there, that three times seven plus two y minus six z has to equal five. And if I just keep on tidying up, like simplifying, like a mathematician should do, I get this equation, which has to be true. I'm gonna go off to the side here a little bit. I subtract 21 from both sides. Oh boy, uh, let's see, 21 minus five is 16. So five minus 21 is negative 16. And why don't we just um, simplify this a little bit by dividing by two. That'll get me y minus three z has to equal uh, negative eight. Okay, so if we just sort of trust the x equals seven and use it for a bit, we might end up in a situation where we would feel a little bit more comfortable, where we have a relationship that has an infinite number of solutions. For these planes to intersect, for both of these equations to be satisfied, we need x to be seven, and we need y minus three z to equal negative eight. Now seems like a great time to introduce a parameter. I mean, you could have introduced a parameter sooner. Just make sure you substitute in statement five as well, because statement five has to be true. That's why I like getting it out of the way first. Well, right here, I'm seeing that, I'm thinking that um, if I'm looking for a line of intersection, maybe I want to find the uh, vector equation or parametric equations or something like that. Notice how easy it would be to isolate for y if z were my parameter. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set uh, z to be t, or hmm, I can never remember what direction we find this easier. I'm gonna set my parameter to be the value of z, but really the impact is that means that my parametric equation for z is going to be um, zero plus one t. Anyways, here let's label um, these equations as well. Let's call this equation six, maybe this statement seven, you could say, into six, we get uh, y minus three t is equal to negative eight. And again, keep in, tra and keep in mind, my goal wasn't to find the value of y, and that's why I was surprised by when I found the value of x, but my goal is to find parametric equations or a contradiction or a truism here. So this will give me a parametric equation for y. y will be negative eight plus three t. And um, so here are my three parametric equations. They're a little bit separated. So let's say the um, intersection is given by these three parametric equations. X equals seven. Why don't we throw in a plus zero T right there? Um, y is gonna be negative eight plus three T and Z is going to be zero plus one T. So we discovered by manipulating the system um, that x is constant, x is always seven. And you'll see that in the direction vector here. Um, we then said, well, what if we let z's parametric equation have like a, a z coordinate, a z zero of zero, and a, um, a z component of its direction vector of one. The consequence of that is discovering the parametric equation for y. So here's our line of intersection. Uh, in vector form, the line of intersections vector equation would be, looks like we've got a P zero of seven, negative eight, zero, which you can check is on both of these lines. Um, 21 minus 16 is uh, five and 14, sorry, 14 uh, minus 24 is negative 10, satisfies both of those equations. And then here comes the direction vector. Uh, plus t, zero, comma, three, comma, one. And yeah, notice, because you have no, or a, sorry, no, not no, but a, a zero component uh, in the x direction of your direction vector, that means that on this line, your x value doesn't change. It is, what, uh, parallel to the yz plane, I suppose. Right. There's your line of intersection. So hiccups can occur. Surprises can sometimes occur when you're solving a system. But if you think about your possible orientations and you think about your goal, you, you won't be caught 
that much off guard. You, you panic for a little bit. That's always a great strategy. Uh, then you calm down and say, wait, I'm looking for a line of intersection, so I need a parameter. I wouldn't need this analysis. This is totally optional given these directions. We weren't told to do an analysis, but it can really help. It can um, ease your concerns about um, being surprised that it looks like you're on track to finding one and only one solution. Now we're definitely getting a line of intersection here. Try that question out, maybe eliminating for x first and see what happens. It looks a little bit different, but I bet you can come to the same conclusion. Try eliminating eliminating a y, it's, it's going to look exactly the same as this, so that wouldn't be as much fun, but still good practice. Try it out.